As you start creating your own presentations in PowerPoint or even opening up existing presentations and making changes to them, you're going to need to know how to save those changes properly. There are a number of save options built into PowerPoint. And keep in mind that this latest version, 2008 for the Mac, does save your presentation using a new file format. We have a new extension, PPTX, that's not readable by previous versions of PowerPoint. So if you're going to be sharing your presentations, it's important to be compatible. So we're going to talk all about that in this lesson. Now you can see I'm still working with my ECP2 file that we opened up in the previous lesson. And if you're jumping to this lesson, have the exercise files, you can go to the Lesson 2 folder to open this up. We did some rearranging and I've just rearranged the last two slides since the last lesson. So I've got my slides in the right order. I made a number of changes. Now it's time for me to actually save those changes. So we can go up to the Save button. Clicking the Save button is just going to update the current file. In other words, it's going to keep the same name, ECP2. It's going to keep the same format, PPTX, and it's going to remain stored in the same location. So it's really more of an update button than it is a save button. However, if you're creating a brand new PowerPoint presentation and you click the save button, the save as dialog box will open up where you can give it a name, choose a location, choose a format, and so on. So instead of just clicking the Save button to update our changes, and clicking it will do exactly that, let's check out the Save As dialog now. We'll go up to the File menu, and notice that just below Save, which by the way has a keyboard shortcut of Command S, so as you're working away on your slides and you're typing away, for example, you might want to just hit Command S every now and then to update those changes. But right below that, Shift Command S, or Save As here on the File menu, will open up that dialog box. Now just before we click that, notice that we have some shortcuts as well. We can save our PowerPoint presentations as pictures. If I've got nine slides in my presentation, using Save As Pictures will save nine individual images that can be opened by any application pretty much that opens up a graphical image. I can even save this as a movie, a QuickTime movie. So an extension of .mov will be added and instead of a PowerPoint presentation, it becomes a little movie that plays from slide to slide. We'll check that out later because you'll want to have slide timings in there and maybe special effects for transitions and so on before saving as a movie. You may want to display your presentation on the web. You can save this as a web page, a web page which will be an HTML format. So we can access all of these as well from the Save As dialog box. So let's go there. From the Save As window, you can see that ECP2 is the name of my file. There's the extension, but I can change locations. For example, if I don't want to save this in the Lesson 2 folder of my exercise files, I could go right to the desktop. Choosing Desktop over here changes the location that it will be saved to. If I want to change the name, for example, ECP3, I can go in here and change that name. Now the extension I won't change manually. Instead, I'll come down to the Format dropdown to choose a format. And when I click this guy, look at all of the options. I can go to previous versions. Notice that the extension for PowerPoint 97 through 2004 is .ppt, short for PowerPoint. It didn't have that XML technology built into it, so you don't see the X like we do now with this latest version. You can save your presentations as templates. We'll do that later on as well. And in fact, older versions of those templates. A PowerPoint package can be created later on when we talk about sharing your presentations with others. We'll talk about saving your presentation as a package that you can hand off to others. And there's those other options, movie and web page, so we can access them right from here. You can even export your presentation to a portable document format, PDF. So anyone who has a preview or Adobe Reader on a Windows PC will be able to open up your presentations. They don't need to have PowerPoint. Down below there are some specialty formats as well. PowerPoint Show is interesting. People don't need to have Microsoft PowerPoint to view a presentation if you save it as a show. And there's older versions as well. You can see we've got some macro enabled versions here too. If you've got macros built into your presentation, you'll want to enable those so they're not recognized as viruses, for example. You could save it as an outline using rich text format. A .rtf extension will be added. There's an office theme, so if you wanted to create your own themes, you could do that right from your presentation. And there's JPEGs, different graphical formats, GIFs, BMPs, and TIFFs. So if you're saving them as pictures, you can choose which format you want to save to. 
So let's take another scenario where we're sharing or collaborating with others and we want to save this to a previous version so that others that we're working with who do not have this latest version of Microsoft PowerPoint will be able to open the presentation and work on them. I'm going to go up to this one here, PowerPoint 97 to 2004, clicking on it, enters it into the format field. Notice that each one of these options has its own description down below. So this format, if we keep it, is compatible with PowerPoint 98 through PowerPoint 2004 for the Mac and PowerPoint 97 through 2003 for Windows. So we can hand this off to people who don't even use a Mac. Now, there is something called the compatibility report that we'll be looking into later on. And notice that a compatibility check is recommended. In fact, there may be some features we've used in our presentation that never existed in these older versions of PowerPoint. So a compatibility check or report will tell us what those are and we'll try to fix those problems and you'll see how they're adjusted. So if we go over to our Save button right now and save this, you can see it's converting it to an older version. And if I go to my desktop, there's my version of the ECP document or presentation we were working on. It's now called ECP3. It's got a different extension, PPT. This could be opened up in this latest version, 2008 of PowerPoint, but it can also be opened up in older versions. So that's using Save As. Now when we talk about the compatibility report later on, of course we'll be working in a mode called compatibility mode that will ensure that we're not using features that other people will not be able to use when we hand it off to them and they open it up in their older version of PowerPoint. But like I said, we'll talk more about that when we get to the compatibility report. So just keep in mind that it's important to save your changes. Personally, I like to save on a regular basis as I'm adding new slides and making adjustments. I like to click the Save button or Command S on the keyboard to quickly update my changes. But it's also important to remember that you can save to all kinds of formats. If you're worried about what others you're collaborating with have at their end, you can always save to generic formats, you can save it to pictures, and of course older versions of PowerPoint as well. So talking about all of these versions and being able to save back to those older versions or other formats, of course, it's important to know that you can open up different versions of documents and create presentations from them. That's what we're going to do in the next lesson.